us for the best. Yeah. I started recording. Yeah. Meeting to order. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Kipia? Present. Fry? Present. Troller? Here. Hughes? Present. Bikeman? Present. Price? Here. Barons? Here. From? Seven. Oh, we got a four. Okay. All right. Uh, first up is the approval of the minutes. Approval of minutes of regular meeting, August 9th. Second. Okay. Do you have any changes, discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And uh, first up, we have a policy hearing. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's you. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Amanda Horn. I work with the North Central Regional Planning Commission. I've been here once or twice before. Um, tonight, we're going to open up the public um, hearing for the CDBG grant application that you guys have um, expressed interest in. So um, basically, if anybody has any comments, now is the time to say it from the public or from the council. Oh. Does anybody have anything to say? All right. Okay, no comments. <laughs> All right, so um, some of the things that we, we um, have to do tonight is actually to go over um, what exactly is happening and what documents need to sign in, in order to proceed. So um, as you guys know, you guys have had some problems with your lagoons, and Daniel has been working with you guys from BG Consultants. He's come up with a proposal and a preliminary engineering report, and... Um, the option that was laid out as the best recommended option is going to be costing in total about $3,787,400. And that's for um, a new lagoon cell, um, an additional wetland development, the screening and, and additions and upgrades to the lift station, a new lift station essentially. So um, because we're working with CDBG, they've changed one of their rules where if a project is over $3 million, then you need to have design done ahead of time. And because design can take an awful long time and it takes a lot of um, time as well to get approved by KDHE, we are, there's no ways we're going to meet that um, deadline and be able to apply in time. So what Thaniel and I have done is we've actually decided to split it into two phases. So we've got phase one, which is going to be the wetlands and um, the new lagoon cell, and then phase two, which is going to be the, your screening and your lift station. And those are actually going to run parallel, but we've called it two phases because now what that means is we can keep the wetlands and the lagoon under the three million mark, and we can apply for CDG, CDBG grant for that. So it's going to be 600,000 of CDBG for that, and then... Um, the other one is going to run on its own through KDHE. So he had suggested KDHE and CDBG funds as KDHE for loan, and there's an option for loan forgiveness if there's enough um, loan forgiveness available. We will not know that until about December or January, but we're going to try and apply for it and get as much as we can. Um, and then the CDBG grant, the most that you guys can get is 600000 so we're applying for the full 600000 for that as well. Um, so you guys have shown an interest in us as NCRPC to help you guys through that application process and to help you administer the grants. So um, what I'd like to do tonight is with everybody's approval, there's um, quite a few documents in that blue folder there that will need to get signed. And some of them need a motion and council approval. Some of them just need to be signed. 
So I'm going to go through the first, one, the first three. It, these just need to be signed by the mayor and um, the clerk or city administrator, and I've, I've highlighted everything and put little sticky signs so you know who's signing what. Um, the first one is a statement of assurances and certifications. This is for CDBG, and this is to say that the city is actually wanting to apply for a CDBG grant, and that if they apply and they get the grant, they um, commit to following like the Civil Rights Act, the Labor Standards, Fair Housing, Conflict of Interest, all of those things that are quite normal with a federal grant. Um, that's the first one that needs to be signed by the mayor and the city administrator. The second one is a disclosure report. Uh, basically, it goes over the details of the project in terms of how much the project is going to be, how much we're applying for for CDBG itself, and then where the other funding source is coming from. And in your case, it's coming from KDHE loans, which hopefully we will get some of that loan forgiveness as well. Um, the third one is a residential anti-displacement and relocation assistance plan. This is also for CDBG. Um, basically, it, th this one is technically irrelevant to your project because you're not displacing anybody's home. So I've just put on the form, not applicable to the project, and it just needs to be signed by the mayor. Okay. I have a question. Is he yes. need to do those now? It would be nice if he could. Yeah, but she wants to take them Do we have to make a motion? No, 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 not, no, yet. Resolution. not yet. Not yeah. yet. This, this, this next stuff will have to have a motion. So um, number four four to nine. These all need council approval and a motion. So the first one is the res resolution 2021-18, and that's the, you're giving legal authority to apply for the grant, for the CDBG grant. Um, so you are, you are dedicating uh, for, remember that's in two phases. So the first phase, you're dedicating $1,727,000 um, as local match. Now, in this case, we're applying for the loan as your local match. So that doesn't necessarily mean it has to come out of city cash, not by any means. We're going to get it from the loan from KDHE. So it's saying you are willing to apply for the CDBG grant and you're dedicating the $1,727,000 if you guys do get the, the $600,000 grant and you want to proceed forward with it. That will need a motion and council approval. So do you want a motion for each individual one? We will have to, yes. Okay. I make a motion to approve Resolution 2021-18, legal authority to apply. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 7-0. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, the next one is Resolution 2021-19. That's for the O&M, which is Operation and Maintenance. Um, I should have written that full out there. Apologies, operation and maintenance budget. So we had a, um, Nathaniel had said that it was probably going to be about the same as what you guys are spending now with a little bit, he recommended about 5,000 extra um, to take care of some of the extra mowing and maybe once in a while you might have to go into the wetland and do a little bit of work in there as well. He thought that would be, a, he thought 5,000 would be more than enough to cover that. So you guys are currently spending 150,000. We've said here that, um, this resolution is stating that you um, commit to having 155000 a year set aside to be able to maintain the new system that will be put into place. I make a resolution or a motion to approve resolution 2021 19. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Seven no. Okay. okay. All right, next on the list is the determination of level of review. Um, because the wetland itself is going to be 14 acres, anything over an acre or any time you dig new ground, it automatically um, throws the environmental review into an environmental assessment. So with each, with KDHE and with CDBG, we're going to have to do an environmental of sorts. And this one is just saying that we are going to be doing an environmental assessment and um, that's all it is. So we've determined at the level of review that it will be an environmental assessment. And that's what we are going to be um, proceeding with. So that too would need a motion. That needs a motion. Yeah. I, I just was reading, so I didn't <laughs> think it did. 
Um, I make a motion to approve the determination of, of level of review. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 7 0. <coughs> okay, the next three are going to be contract based. Um, the first one is a contract with us and CRPC to help you apply for the CDBG grant, CDBG grant and then to administer it once it has um, been granted. Um, as you all know, these are very competitive grants and we do have a lot of water and sewer applications this year, so nothing is ever guaranteed, but you guys do have a very strong um, chance at getting it with everything that you guys have got going on. So it's, it's looking good. Okay, so um, we charge uh, $500 to apply for the application, but if you guys get the grant, then that fee falls away and then it's down to nothing again. The one thing that does um, cost a bit of money is the environmental assessment that we've just talked about. That on its own is $3,000. Um, and it could be paid by the city or it can be rolled into the KDHE loan and grant as well and then split over the 20 years. But that's up to you guys to decide. You don't have to decide that now. What you do have to decide is whether you want us as NCRPC to be the ones to administer that. And if you do, we'd need a motion for that and approval. And that would then, um, we'd be in contract with you guys to be able to do that for you all. I make a motion to approve the N. I want to ask her a question first, please. Yes. If I may. Yep. About this, because there's a continuing thing in this where it could be $50 an hour, but we don't know how much that might be on top of that. Is that correct? Uh, no. Nope. On this one, it's just very set fees. So it would be 500 for the application. If you guys did not get it this year and you decided not to apply next year again, then that $500 would be due. But it's, that's a once-off cost. Not a, not a continuing cost. Okay, I what's, think. What's the fifty dollar per hour max if uh, we're charged if help's requested? I think that's on the next one on the for the mm -hmm. KDHE application, and I will definitely explain I'll ask that. You in another minute, then. Yes, <laughs> I, I will be sure to explain it when we get there. <laughs> Thank you for asking, though. And then the, the 20,000, I, I didn't mention the 20,000. So the 20,000 is what um, we charge over the three years, but that does not come from the city money, that comes from the grant money itself. So it still costs the city because they'll be taken out of the grant money? That is true. It can be seen like that, yes. Yeah. Okay. Make a motion to approve the NCRPC application and administration contract. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 7 0. Okay. All right, so the next one is for the KDA application and environmental contract. Um, we charge $1,000 to cover expenses associated with the loan application and with the environmental. So it's about the same. It's $500 for the application and then another $500 for the um, environmental. However, since we are going to be doing an environmental with CDBG, um, it's, we use some of the same processes, so we drop that 500 fee. However, and this is why I say it, if for some reason um, you don't get the CDBG and the, you, know, you don't get the loan forgiveness you're wanting and it, everything falls apart and nothing works, then you decide not to do it, that would be what we would charge. But Otherwise, it would just be $500 for the application fee. If CDBG goes through and we do the environmental, the full environmental, then it's um, the 500, the extra 500 is dropped. So now, um, what the $50 is, is that recently we have been having to contact the tribes quite a bit. And with this project, we will have to because we're digging up more than an acre of land. Um, and if the tribes come back to us and they say, um, you will need to perform a cultural survey, which requires archaeologists. Uh, we, we can handle all of that on your behalf, but then that's when we charge $50 per hour up to a max of $500. And I will tell you, I'm currently dealing with this, and I've spent over three weeks worth of time dealing with this. So the 500 max does not cover what we 
put into it, but we've got, NCRPC has got other grants that we try and use some to keep the costs as low as possible for the cities. So that is what the $50 an hour up to a 500 max is. So that is just in case the tribes come back and say that they, um, they would like a cultural survey performed and we have to get the archaeologists involved. Who's the tribe? Which tribe? The Osage Nation. Um, they have been, uh, mo most, uh, we contact the tribes on every project, basically, and um, the Osage Nation recently has been coming back with a lot of requests for cultural surveys to be completed. So, and because we want to respect their land and their wishes, we um, make sure that we get good archaeologists to follow up with that. Um, I'm going to go through the KDHE administration contract and then if you don't mind you could do all three of them at one time to <laughs> save a bit of time. So the next one is the KDHE administration contract. Um, so this is once approved and the loan has gone through. There's um, paperwork for requests for payments, there's employee interviews, there's labor wages, um, payrolls that have to come through, and we ask 4,500 to cover the loan administration and the associated meet meetings with KDHE that comes with that on behalf of the city. So those are the, the three application or the three contracts would be one for the CDBG um, administration, one for the KDHE application environmental, and then one for the KDHE administration. So you, you do eight and nine together if you want. Okay. I make a motion to approve the KDHE application environmental contract and the KDHE administration contract. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, all right, I think that's all from me. I've got um, deadlines that I'm hurriedly trying to make and beat, but you guys are looking in great shape, so I'm excited. I think I'll be back at your next council meeting because we've got to do one more of these for KDHE. Unfortunately, the timing didn't work out to hold them both on the same night, but thank you very much for your time, and we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Because you're attesting to this and to everything about that.
Sunset City Clerk. Next up, we have public comment. Is anybody here for five-minute public comment? Mark Hoffman with the uh, Point Express Gravel Dash. I just have a couple quick things for the event coming up in about two and a half weeks. Um, we've had to change our route and the way we're going to leave town, so I need to uh, change the uh, police escort um, direction that we are going. Originally, we were going to go on from Broadway south on 8th Street to the city park out on Highway 77 south of town. Now we're going to go northeast, so we'll need to go across Highway 36 going north on 8th Street all the way up to uh, Jayhawk, so we'll just need to change the route for the police escort. Um, I can just get with the police on police chief on that. Yep. Is that okay? Um, the two sets of bleachers that are usually down in the corridor, I think right now they're behind Todd Landel's buildings down their former Hass Auto area. Uh, we wanted to see if we could have those moved to the uh, 600 block area of Broadway, possibly that Friday of the event. So we got them some extra seating for uh, people near the finish line. And possibly some of the picnic tables. I know there was some down on the 7th Street corridor recently, kind of in one of the parking spots. I'm not sure where they are now, but maybe if we can get some of those. I'm not sure if the wagon wheels wanting to use those in their area. If not, then we might uh, try to put some around in the area that we're going to have blocked off. I did have a question on the, the where the buildings are being demolished there west of the Point Express sculpture. I didn't know what the is the ground going to be rock or dirt or what what the status will be in two and a half weeks or dirt. Dirt. Okay. Yeah. Do we need to have that like roped off, caution tape, just keep people out of there? Or I didn't know I if mean, you wanted if to. It's in, in, I mean, if it's muddy, it should be black dirt. Um, uh, if it's we'll, dry, look, we'll look at it at that point in time. Get but, closer. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, we can rope it off, just keep people walking across there. Possibly, if, if, if it's dry, it's not going to hurt anybody. Okay. Yeah. That's what I needed to know. So that's all I had. Any questions for us? Very simple. Yeah. Any problem moving those bleachers? Then? No. Just get a hold of city yeah. street crew. Yeah. No. Call city hall. And we'll call the city hall yeah. and make yeah. arrangements for that. You said 600 block. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually thinking maybe putting them kind of where the buildings are being demolished, facing the street, kind of backed up to the sidewalk, possibly there. Okay. You know. In the street. That'd be like yeah. the Seventh Street okay. corridor about. 
What's that? Just at the 7th Street corridor about. Yeah, yeah it'd be yeah. just west of the Point Express sculpture, you know, along 6th Street there, because we're going to have that block entirely blocked off. Uh, you mean along block. Broadway or along 6th Street? Broadway. Some Broadway. Oh, Broadway. Yeah, I was gonna, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, on Broadway. By, by, um, Facing south, kind of backed up yeah. to where they're demolishing the buildings. So. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else here for public comment? I am. Yes, I am. I'm Diane Schroeder and 211 South 15th Ward 4 and I'm here to ask permission to park my car or any other volunteers that are working at the Rose Garden down by the park uh, next to the pool when school is in session and the pool isn't open. As you can see by the picture, the vehicle will fit in the space without the bumper sticking over the sidewalk or the street. There is no parking available next to the Rose Garden when you need to work there, and it's very unhandy to carry buckets, brooms, hose, spades, etc., to and from your vehicle when you need to work at the garden. It is even harder to carry mulch, plants, and water since they don't turn on the water in the spring or the fall. So, you also have to carry the weeds home with you because there's no receptacle or any place to leave them. So. Uh, and I would also like to say that I don't think people realize how much time and money out of their own pockets the volunteers such as Beth Skinner, Laura Richter, or Sharon Kessinger, and other people that help, them, uh, that help to keep the other places around town beautiful, such as Water Tower Hill, 7th Street Corridor, and the west entrance into Marysville areas around the, and around the Pony Express Horse and the Kester House. We always need volunteers to help, so I thank you for your time. I don't know. Was there was there an issue or something or what? Yeah. Okay. Well, I just want to know if I can park the car there. Well, I don't, council I don't see now. Problem with it. Yeah. As long as it's not on the sidewalk, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. Or in the street. So over either one of them, then it's subject to the deals that we have about them. Mm -hmm. oh. You're good to go. Okay. That's all I need to know. Okay. Test consensus of council is... Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, we'd like to say thank you for all the volunteers because we know that does take a lot of work and time to keep that looking nice. Not just that one, but a lot of different areas around town. I've seen several people around town slaving away a lot of times in 100 degree plus weather, keeping those areas looking nice. Well, and it costs a lot of money too. I mean, I know the city yeah. gives the city gives us $500, and we certainly appreciate that, but it costs a lot more money than that well, sometimes and a lot of to time. do it. And the time. Mm -hmm. so. sure. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, is anybody else here for public comment? Okay. Um, business and discussion items. First up, we have uh, planning restrictions by fire hydrants. Dennis Kramer. Hello. Good evening. First of all, uh, my name is Dennis Kramer, and uh, I want to thank the City Council for allowing me to come tonight and speak to you on, about the a letter that I received, a violation of uh, some plantings that are growing near a fire hydrant. Um, I live at 801 North 9th here in Marysville. Been there since September of 1973. The plants that are have caused an issue have been there since 1974. In the 47 years that they have been there growing, I've only had one comment from any city employee regarding them, and it was about uh, site to make sure that there was enough site for people going around the intersection, the corner. 
Um, and, uh, but that's, that's the only, and that was about 15 years ago. So I haven't had anything since then. Uh, I didn't know about the, the ordinance, so I apologize. And the only reason why I share that is because I just want to establish that I, I didn't intentionally violate an ordinance. And I don't know if the ordinance was in effect there in 74 or not. It may have been. I was, I was told that the, the mandate is that the plants need to be 10 feet uh, beyond a hydrant. So when I received the notice, I immediately went out and got my chainsaw and went to work on them. And, um, and I was cutting away, and then I thought, well, I would contact the city to, to see if I was in compliance or not. So I called, and uh, uh, Ms. Holly was very uh, cooperative and very, very helpful. Uh, she told me I needed to speak with uh, Mr. Ralph, which I did. I called him. He came up immediately, very kind. Um, he inspected the area, the, uh, the efforts that I had taken that far uh, at that point, and he told me to stop. And he said it wasn't necessary to trim any further, uh, that what I needed to do is come and, and present my, my situation to you folks. So that, that's what I'm doing here this evening. Um, so what, I, what I'd like to ask is that I would like to work with Mr. Ralph if there's anything additional that I need to do to make sure that the property's in compliance. I think the, the corner is very attractive. It's uh, unique. Um, I've had a number of people that have already stopped and uh, come to my door and came, came to me and said it's very, very beautiful, looks very neat. It looks like it's the windswept look. If you've ever been to the West Coast in California, it kind of has a um, Monterey Cypress look, if you know what those look like. Um, and that was my intent. Uh, for those of you that are bonsai enthusiasts, it also has that sort of look. Um, but, but I realized, though, that at the very base of the plant, one is 10 feet back from the hydrant, one is eight, and one is a little over seven. So one, one is in compliance, the other two are not. Uh, these three sisters have been together for a long time, and I'd like to keep them that way. Uh, the foliage itself is pushed back well over 10 feet. The foliage is not an issue. Um, so I don't know, I, I sent a picture down so that you kind of have a look. See what it, see see the indication of it. So the base and it flows backwards and out away. Um, I, I intentionally took out uh, um, a lot of branches so that there would be a good in, a good site. I've asked some of the neighbors uh, what they thought, um, and they they all are wanting to see it as stay as it is. But then I understand that uh, I I need to plead my case here. What I did do, though, is I, I did go online, and the National Fire uh, Protection Act allows for three feet uh, and not ten. But it does make this comment, and it, and it says that um, except otherwise required or approved. And your uh, uh, that with and you may not have been around when the ordinance was was placed, but uh, for, for for the most part. Um, this particular ordinance says 10 feet. Um, that recommendation is three, uh, and I can't argue that either way uh, because I need to comply with whatever the ordinance says. But what, what I would request tonight is that you allow me to work with Mr. Ralph to make sure that uh, that site is attractive, um, but it's uh, accessible to the fire uh, department. They did choose that particular hydrant to use when there was a fire about a little over a year ago rather than going uh, north. I don't know why, but they did. They found it about 3 o'clock in the morning. I know that because it got us up. Um, but they said nothing to me about it, about finding the hydrant. Apparently, they didn't have any issues to locate it. That was when the bushes were all full in there. So uh, the way it appears right now, it's a lot different. But anyway, that's all I can do is just... Uh, Ask for your mercy, but I would like to work with Mr. Ralph, if possible, uh, if you see that there, uh, if you feel like I need to go further than what I have. I don't know if you have any questions or not. If I were, if I were a betting man, I'd say that 10 foot was a, just a round number that when that was drafted, where that 10 foot came from. So, I mean, I don't, it won't, like, the fireman over there. It was What's the fireman's opinion? My opinion? Three feet around 
Turn off the wrap of hose and turn them on. And if you want to know why yours was found that night in the morning, because it's the direction the trucks come from. Okay. The chiefs get there, call out the hydrants first. That's also an orange one, so it flows good water. That's what we like to hook up to the truck is the bigger hydrant. That way you have what you need. Um, we have another ordinance that presents a problem. That's <clears throat> no, no, no. We we have another ordinance about fire hydrants. And it's 15 feet. Oh. So I think what we ought to do is I think we ought to let him leave it just how it is because mm -hmm. I think it looks really good. Mm -hmm. I think that we ought to hear from the Hendersons and I think we ought to table some of this and have some discussions about this because we have a few issues. That's where I'm at. I'm very grateful. I want to thank you very much. Yeah, I, I, I think it looks great. I okay. Honestly, I didn't have a huge yeah, problem with it the way it was before. I just would have liked it trimmed up so you can see it a little clearer yeah. from the street. It looks great now, though. Yeah. And, and moving forward, is going to be much easier to maintain it this way from, from oh, my I'm, perspective. I'm sure. <laughs> and, and the reason why is because it's pushed away from yeah, it. And yeah. to do any kind of trimming now, it's, it's automatically going to they'll stay away. So yeah. thank you very much. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Dennis. Yeah, no. All right, uh, next up we have planning restrictions by fire hydrant Debbie Henderson. Hello, we too received a letter of being in noncompliance. And when we built the house, we, we immediately covered our corner because we have like it says here, we live at 15 Oak Park, 08 Park Place. We have a fire hydrant, telephone pole, water meter access, and a street sign. So to pretty up that corner, we made a... <clears throat> to make it more attractive and easier to maintain, I edged and cornered with rock bushes and daylilies. And every, every plant we have is full grown. As you can see in the one picture that the city took, full access to the fire hydrant. <coughs> It says, plants have been planted on that corner for 25 years. Once there was a complaint about visibility, and we trimmed that tree down. It said, the bushes to the city's satisf satisfaction. Another time, the city needed to work on the water line. I believe they replaced the fire hydrant. And when they did that, of course, they had to tear out all the plants, which is understandable. And they told us, and that was fine. And then afterwards, we replanted, made it pretty. Fixed it back with new rocks and smaller plants. So the bush that was the problem to begin with was never replaced. So the spire reefs we have aren't even as tall as the fire hydrant. It says, now we received a registered letter stating plants within 10 feet of the hydrant have to be removed, pursuant a city ordinance. They re represent an obstruction. The city ordinance of 10 foot perimeter has never been followed or enforced. It says, I know this because no one has ever mentioned it in 25 years. So we took this, built this photo of an old building. You can see the building. Fire hydrant's five foot away from it. So I don't know either the city okayed the, the building or the fire hydrant was put in after the fact. But either way, no one was concerned with the foot, 10 foot perimeter at that time. And then it says I have a telephone pole street sign with a hydrant. They're within four to five feet of that hydrant. And if I'm to understand that my bush is eight feet away constitute an obstruction to the access, then they do not. It says, I took pictures of this telephone pole on the high school. You see a picture of the high school, or the, the telephone pole, but anyway, it's proximity, I could put two flip-flops between that and the telephone pole. Okay, so otherwise it would be more concern of a multi-million dollar school and the lives at risk in case of a fire. Those aren't squashable. My plants can be stepped on and squashed and and I'd be okay with that if we had a fire. And it says, I realize telephone poles and street signs will be exempt from the ordinance. So what will be enforced? It says, I took this picture of a tree within four to five feet of a hydrant. Notice its diameter. That tree has been growing there for probably 40 years or more. It's no more of an obstruction to access than those telephone poles. <clears throat> Are you now going to make the owner remove it because it falls within 10 feet perimeter? That big, beautiful tree is providing shade and comfort to the homeowner as well as home and safety to birds and small animals. It would be a crime against nature to cut that tree down in answer to an ordinance that has never been enforced. 
on the Kester block corner. There's a picture there too. The beautiful lilac bushes along that perimeter of the property on the corner is a fire hydrant. And those lilacs are only about, I'd say a foot maybe, or a foot and a half from those bushes. It says they don't constitute an obstruction to access. Is the city going to remove those lilacs and open up that corner? I hope not. It's a beautiful corner. And they do concerts there, and, and it would be terrible to take those down. It said they provide a beautiful hedge and resi resist trespassing on that property. On my corner, my plants are all at mature size, and they don't hinder access to the fire hydrant. Actually, my oldest plants, closest plants to the hydrant, are twice the distance than the city's lilacs. You can clearly get to the hydrant from either street, and I don't know why after all these years this ordinance is now being made an issue. What I do know is the city has been devoting much time, energy, and money in making this community more attractive. It's incongruent with, to make its citizens who have, who have only done the same tear out their landscaping. To satisfy a city ordinance that's never been followed and never been enforced. I hope this council, council will revisit this ordinance, sensibly discuss it, and make appropriate changes to it. And I appreciate you listening, but I, don't, I just don't understand it. I mean, I know it's been there, like you said, 15 years now. I hear it goes back to 15 foot at one time, 10 foot now. But like Dennis said, you know, with the fire people, ten, three feet was, was good. So I don't know. I just hope you can revisit it, maybe discuss it. And a lot of times, if there's a squeaky wheel about one thing, yeah. it snowballs into... Unfortunately, situations like this, if somebody has one complaint, and Will does his job very well. He, he's a middleman, really I understand that. He deals with the public very well, but Will's got his job. And because he was asked about a different situation, now we can't do one situation without encompassing all the other situations. Because... It isn't anything to do with you, or it just, the situation happened, he got called in, you know, the city got, it was brought to council, and now this is the result of it. So, there we are. There's probably a handful in this entire town that has anything planted by their fire hydrant. But, I mean, you can't move the buildings that already exist right there. I mean, it's just not possible. And the trees that have been there for years upon years, you're not going to even want to attempt to move those. I mean, it's not fair to the people that even own the homes. I mean, we could shape ours up, but, you know, they're still going to be within... We don't need to shape ours up. Like this. That registered letter gave us a choice. Either removal before September 6th or the city would removal at our expense. I'm not tearing out my own landscaping. Not when it's not obstructing any access to that fire hydrant. So, good leadership leads by example. Y'all want to tear out your all's lilac bushes? I don't think so. Nor would we want you to. And I'm not tearing out my bushes. I'll let the city destroy that. And we realize that's at our tell, expense. Don't tell me it don't. It ain't about me. I'm the one that put in the work mm -hmm. and the money and the energy and putting that there. Mm -hmm. And no one wants to say anything. When I built it and maintained it repaired it after the city took it out and they were happy with it then. So, y'all go ahead do what you gotta do. city can do what they gotta do. And then I'll clean up the mess afterwards. That's the reason I want to take this. There's gotta be some common sense brought in here. Exactly. Right, but yes. If there's, right, I agree. And how do we make sure that, I mean, you know, we, we don't want to be people that don't comply. I mean, we don't. There, but you are the... There's no penalty applied okay. at, in so that part of the code. So we can delay any removal you, it, till it, this the gets council solved. is the... They're all talking at once. How about one at a time? 
Okay, well, I think we should not do anything until we get this looked at by committee or council in general. And I, I totally we should agree with it. you. Yep. And I second you on that. I agree. Yeah, tabled. Okay. Appreciate your time. Right. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next up, we have a Trail Life and American Heritage Girls Recruitment Night on August 25th. Ben Throm. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, I'm Ben Throm. I'm here representing American Heritage Girls and Trail Life uh, USA. Uh, we're having our annual recruitment that we have every year. We've had great luck recruiting out at Country Club Lake, and we appreciate all the work the, that you've done out there to make sure that grounds are great. Um, I'm here tonight requesting the use of uh, single, uh, single pump BB guns and 15-pound uh, draw bows. Um, we're, this year we're going to do a little different. We're going to be using uh, Josh from Impulse Archery. He's going to come out and set up his range for us. So we're going to have qualified supervision out there. As you can see from the map that I provided for your packets, there, um, everything's going to be taped out. We've talked to Chief Ackerman, and he has approved this event. He has no complaints from last year, and we've successfully held this event for three years, and we'd just like permission to do it again. Is this the same spot as you did last year? Yep. Okay. Yeah, but it works great there. We've talked to uh, JC and... Uh, events and they don't have any events going on there on Wednesday night so it will just be us there than anyone who shows up to use the fishing docks and we'll have the police tape surrounding it to make sure that we have qualified supervision over all events. Move to approve. Second. Okay any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 7-0. Oh. Thank you, okay. Council. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you better take that. Yes. Okay. I'll put off the dash. Sure you will. <laughs> uh -huh. you Thank you. Thank you. Thank um, you. Next up, we have the Mar Marshall County Sport and Rec Contract. Basically, it looks like it's about the same thing as what we had on the Absolutely. All, all we changed was to three years and 68000 as you instructed us to write. I changed it. John looked at it. And you didn't approve it. Yeah. There's nothing that is uh, identical to the prior contract except for, uh, as explained by the city clerk. I have one question. Oh, yes, sir. Did they, did they approve it, too? Just how they're not here tonight. Uh, yes. Right. Okay. They thought it was all right, yes. too? Yes. Yes. And if they don't approve it, I mean, they, they still have the option to read through yeah. it again before they sign it. So, yes, they, they got to look at it, and then they have another <coughs> chance. They actually called and said, do you have that approved yet? <laughs> so. Well, I'd like to make a motion, then, that we approve the okay. contract this evening. All right. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, unless I missed it, I don't see where it's... It, I can find where it says to make field improvements for safety wise. Oh, what you told them specifically? Oh, yeah. We did not change the contract for that. That you just verbally. Told okay. Them. You are correct. Okay. Any further discussion about anything else on there? Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. Nope. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, 6 1. Okay, we do not have any notices and hearings. Uh, next up is the consent agenda. Move to approve consent agenda. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 7 0. All right, next up we have appropriations ordinance number 3754. Move to approve appropriations ordinance number 3754 in the amount of $665,211.87. And Second. Okay. Any discussion about anything on there? Mr. Mayor? I, I, I want to ask uh, how we are accepting this 
re revised contract. That, that part of that, to me, if you contracted it for doing it, it should stay there. There's about $2,200 there. But that, that should have been brought maybe to somebody's attention before we approve it and pay it. What, Rev? There's no contract in here. This just... No, he had a contract that he did it for so much. I don't... What What contract? There's no contract in Yes. You're on page 32, is that right? Page 32. I, I realize the part that's in this book is so much was for 11th Street Road, but this is a revised thing. If somebody did have a revision, maybe it should have brought to somebody's attention if we're going to revise something well, that we already had a contract for. It just says you revised the project on 17th and Jacobs. That's all the invoice says. I don't know what you revised it for, why they charged it extra. And they charged us like 2200 on the water project. But I didn't know what was revised. Did it come straight to you guys? It says phasing. Well, we'll go and look at it. <coughs> what Didn't we phase that and put it into two phases? Yeah, there were updates made, construction drawings. I don't know if that was when you put them together. Yeah. Updating advertisement and drawings. So this is the work they did to get the project re-advertised for the second round. Because we advertised it once. Oh, that's right. And, and then, then they revised then it. We phased it so that somebody could do it in two phases if we, they wanted right. to. And then this company come in and did it all right. at one price. Which still should have came like a long time ago. Um, so, I mean, we, we asked for it. I mean, the, the council asked. <coughs> did not, denied the first bid and then went out for another <coughs> round. That's what this was. But just they're painting fillings off a little bit. That's not our fault. Right. But that, that's the only thing I can come up with on that is that uh, because we had it bid again, um, they changed up the, desi uh, the design to phase it into two phases. Yes, sir. I have one other question about it. Uh, I notice whether they get, ever get used or not. We we got 96 railroad ties. All of a sudden, we purchased for the shooting range. Mm -hmm. Yes. When were they? When were they ordered? Who? Who's? How much? How much were they? Yeah, they were seventeen hundred fifty-seven dollars. Seventeen hundred fifty-seven dollars. That's uh, for. Um, they were ordered like a month ago um, for the fire range. It was in the police report. Right. It was discussed clear back when the police range was shoved up. Right. That they were going to put in to help stop the erosion. It, it was a matter of finding somebody <coughs> close enough locally that had them. Right. And we we have a line item for the police range to or the fire range to All maintain right. it. Just want to know about it yep. because when I see it on there, I didn't remember here lately talking about it. Right. That's my only two comments about it. All right. No, I can, I've read all of these. Any further discussion about anything on there? Roll call. Pippia? Yes. Fry? Yes. Troller? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Bikeman? Yes. Price? Yes. Barron? Yes. Nope. Seven. Seven. Oh. Uh, next up, Austin with the staff reports. Okay, I do have, I didn't have anything listed, but I do have one issue that came up today um, that I wanted to 
uh, talk to the council about. It has to do with the demolition over here. Um, demolition going fine. There are some issues they'll probably have to uh, iron out uh, in the future. Uh, replacing the sidewalk along um, the highway is one of them. Uh, but uh, I'm going to pull up this picture real quick. Um, on your screens. Oh. I apologize. I was just playing with this earlier. <laughs> is that the only reason you're doing this? Yes, this is the sole reason I'm doing yep, there this. There it is. Yep, there it is. Um, okay, as you can see, uh, the adjacent building uh, that is we are not tearing down. Um, uh, it's a beautiful wall um, that we were going to stucco as, as a part of this project. Um, after evaluation by Steve Bloomer of Inline, uh, this stucco is not going to stick to what's mm -hmm. there. Uh, as you can see, the lower part of this, the limestone br uh, bricks don't have any mortar. Um, uh, and all the way up, it's just, it's, it's um, kind of in bad shape. And he made the statement that this building was in worse shape than the, uh, at the same level or in worse shape than the ones we just took down. Okay. Um, and uh, so I'm wondering how do you guys want to proceed? With this, this is definitely their wall. Mm -hmm. um, Whose wall? Well, the owner of that building. So that would be considered <coughs> how, even though it was June. It, it was not it attached. Was not, attached. Not, not attached. attached. No. Not attached. No. It was not attached. It, so, did Steve Bloomer have a recommendation as far as putting up a retaining wall of bricks, cinder? He concrete? said he says he's done something similar in Hanover. <coughs> Uh, where he put a foundation of cement and then uh, a, um, a studded wall up the side, a two by six studded wall, and then tin on the outside, or metal on the outside. How do they sister in the roof? I'd have to ask Steve that. Um, but they... Um, I know where they're talking about. Have you seen it? Yeah, I've seen it too. <laughs> so that was one option. That's probably not the only option out there, mm -hmm. um, but it, it's it's there. Um, again, this is the owner of that building's wall. Uh, technically, they should probably pay 100% of it. Have they been consulted yet? Uh, he's talked to Steve on this one <laughs> and <laughs> tried to sell the building right there. Who owns it? It's Charlie. Uh, yeah, Charlie Frederick. Charlie Frederick. Fredericks. So uh, Charlie Fredericks owns that owns this building. He owns the company that owns it or whatever. Yeah. Who is it? Who is the company that? Yeah, he has yeah. other houses. He has it in a name, but yeah, it's um, Charlie's. But, but is the building occupied? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's how I, um, I I feel like ten and two by, two by sixes is kind of a slapdash temporary answer. I mean, if that building's going to stay, yeah, it'd be it nice to have like something there that maybe you could paint a mural on or I think something. We get a couple options. Here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because I wonder if you couldn't shot creed it. I wonder about that. Shot create it and smooth it trail. I think the I don't know if stone is falling out. Right. I don't I don't know if you can. That's the reason I asked that. Uh, there is there is the other issue. I didn't get a picture of the front. Um, Steve had pointed out uh, on that building that's still there. Um, he I mean to tie it in to what we just took down. Um, what we just took down, I forget which building it was. I think it was the first building next to the pony. 
um, when Steve went up with his bucket to take down the front wall, he put his bucket there and pulled back. What he got was the backing to the brick. And he stated he's never had that happen before, where the backing to the brick just came off. Uh, what he surmised from that was that uh, the ties for the brick had deteriorated away. And uh, the dangerous thought came to mind that anybody walking in front of that building uh, potentially could have a literal ton of bricks fall on them. Um, and that's kind of what I'm afraid of is in the next building. So that, that building's owner should have a structural engineer probably check that out, right? Yes. That's really the best. Answer. That's probably it for his own interest. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, it's not really our building, so we really Correct. shouldn't have. We sh really shouldn't have to worry about it. Correct. Um, that I mean, that's that's kind of what I was thinking. But there, I mean, there's a thought, and this is just spitballing from the other side that we uh, we technically uncovered it. That doesn't mean we caused it. That doesn't no. mean uh, it, it, it. And more than likely, ninety percent of the time, they were already deteriorating. I mean, that's just the certainty that we have right now. Um, and we were going to stucco it so it looked nice, uh, but at this point in time, that doesn't, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Um, uh, so, uh, since we were already almost anchored into uh, fix, covering that wall up, I thought I'd bring that as a talking point. So, what I'm getting from the council uh, is that we pro uh, should probably discuss with Charlie uh, that he needs to contact a structural engineer at the um, um, uh, to evaluate his building. Is that what I'm getting? Yeah, and I think we can I mean, kind of pause our options, but we should explore what we need to do to help improve the mm -hmm. the look and also, I mean. We did, we did expose it on some level, so mm -hmm. I don't think, you know, we should try to hang a cinder block wall on the neighboring landowner or anything like that. But right. I don't think we should do anything yet. It, I assume there's they're not worried about water infiltration or anything at the moment. We did not discuss that, but probably. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it, there's it. not... Oh, it looks <laughs> like it would be a water issue. It, it's it's uh, probably <clears throat> not going to. The doors that they just shut. Oh, so was there dead space in between that and the next building, or how Probably is it? Probably just a little bit. It's it's about it's. I think it's the wall. So it's like I mean, thing. it's it's all the years of the moisture and everything yeah. getting down in there. Oh yeah. So yeah. All, yeah. All we did was remove, mm -hmm. so you could actually see, see what's been happening. Exactly. Over you walk down Broadway. There's a lot of buildings that have like yeah tiny yeah. gaps, yeah. and then you look and they're about half full up with just dust and things that settled sure. in your. Yeah. And that's what I mean. It, yeah. yeah, I got found because buildings were taken down, but right. you could go anywhere and probably find the same thing. Right. So, yeah, I, so that's that's the challenge. Uh, I wanted to present that to you guys. Um, so I'll, I'll talk to Charlie about that. Okay. Is that it? Anything else? That's all I got. Uh, next up, standing committees. Uh, anybody have anything on street? I noticed there's some crosswalk lights out. I meant to. I noticed today. I meant to just call down, but well, it crossed my mind. At 15th and Center, the at least the northbound ones. And since kids go to school there and stuff, I don't. I don't know. There's probably kids that'd be confused if the lights not flashing to stop. The uh, just the crosswalk signal. But it's the kind of thing I don't, you know, they wouldn't report until somebody notices. Who the heck knows? So. Okay. Okay. Anything else on the street? Yes, Diane. 12th Road. I've been getting lots of complaints about 12th Road. But it's oh, really yeah. bad. It is. Well, it's as bad as, I mean, it's been bad for... Well, I know, but apparently it's getting really bad. I don't know if we need to just... 
tear it up and put it back to all gravel or well I mean that's the chuckles that's are bad option. the guys just threw some gravel in them and they, it doesn't stay I mean I, I don't know yeah. one person took their folks' old truck out there instead of his car because he won't drive on it so it's I mean we really do need to do something about it apparently no, I mean, it's been an ongoing. I mean, we've had discussions about it before, what to do about it. We've yeah. talked about tearing it out and putting gravel back in. But then they complain that it's going to be too dusty. It'll be dusty. Well, it's partly, it's partly, it's, du it's partly dusty. I mean, it's partly gravel anyway, so, I mean, sometimes I think gravel, at least you can maintain the gravel. <coughs> there, there's better rock out there than what we have been putting out. You know, different rock instead of the red rock. Get the white rock, get the, the better rock. You know, granted, you're still going to get dust and dirt, but it's going to settle better, and it's not going to just go to goo when it rains. Didn't, I'm talking about we, the I'm talking about the black top. I'm not talking yeah. about the, I'm not talking about the gravel. Didn't, I'm talking about the black top part of it. Didn't we discuss one time about possibly having our guys doing the kind of an overlay out there? Yes, and, and yep. that was. And I know that's not a long-term permanent. Yeah, that's Fix, it's, but it is what we did cheaper. On the road and it was pretty decent for like a month. Yeah, it's not going to work. It's just such a short term solution. It's not a long term fix, but it's it needs, cheaper. It's, I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah, it's I know, cheaper, the it's an improvement for a yeah, while. Good least. intentions and slapdash I know. responses, you know. I was going to say, if you've already knocked the base out of it, what you have in the holes, then it's, all you're going to do is you're going to put that on. Couple semis drive over it, you're going to be right back to the same alligatoring, and then as soon as you get some water and some freezing, it'll pop it right out. It'll be and it'll actually be deeper because it's yeah thicker everywhere around the hole. Yeah, it'll be deep. You'd actually have to fix the holes correctly. You have to dig them out and mat them. It all back. needs dug out. Yeah. I disagree. And not to change the subjects, but yes. speaking of holes, places that probably need dug out, North 16th Street up by the cemetery, <coughs> it's got a spot or two that's gotten really rough. There, ain't it? Some, I don't know if something springs trying to pop up or what, but it just about wrecked me on my motorcycle the other day. Yeah, There's a I ridge it, in the middle of 16th. Yeah. yeah, it's got a ridge right in the center of the road. Yeah, it's pushing up out of nowhere. I didn't notice it till this year, so... And I don't know if it's street or water. They're on 509 South 14th. The barricades are still outside of their driveway, and we need to do something about it. I mean, they're getting a little tired of backing out of their driveway and having to worry about the barricades out there. Do they so. have that street completely opened up yet or not? No, Open there's just a hole. There's just a hole in the street, exactly. and they put the barricades outside the driveway. So. Oh, okay. It's not a big hole, but it's a little hole, but they need to, I don't know if they've ever checked to see what the problem is, or like I said, I don't know if it's water or if it's the street, but there's something under there. I don't know. Do you know I've there? talked, I forget, it's been a couple of weeks since I've visited that one. I mean, I know they've been busy. I mean, I've seen them on a couple of different projects, and they had another sec another I mean, area tour up today. On we're going into fall now, and you know, it, we now. don't really want to... And then what about the eye doctors there? What? Why is that just left open there? The um, barricades there's, there. There's some large rocks that we need to figure out how to move out of the hole. Oh, yeah. I mean that's water. I'm sorry, we're we're into water yeah. now. Yeah. So. No, that 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 one's a landscaping issue because the the retaining wall fell into the hole and. Uh, oh. Uh, yeah, we just need to figure out how to get the the retaining wall out. I see. Okay. Um, anything else on the street? There's a lot of uh, grass and weeds growing up in some of the streets. I don't know if we need to spray them, or, but they're not small is what I'm getting. Right. They're yeah. you know, right there between the gutter and the street where they meet. All that's going to do is make that crack bigger and create us bigger problems. That's all over. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, but that's what I mean. I we know, need to I know. Start working on it, and, no. and I, that's why I say I don't know if it's us. I don't know who it is that needs to do it, but I don't know. I me, mean, I generally, but I mean, before they do the chip and seal, they clean them all. Right, you know, but weedy it all chip down. And seal and, route, and, no, yeah. if if we're able if we're able to get up and down it with a uh, this um, 
street sweeper that usually takes care of them. Um, a lot of the a lot of the streets that have it. I mean, the bricks are hard hard oh, enough. Oh yeah. But uh, um, if if These at the t at the point in time where this um, street sweeper goes by and there's a car parked in the way, yeah. then then it's you, you've missed it on that round of the city, and so the only chance is to go back um, later on. But so yes, okay. Because the street sweeper will keep it knocked down with its bristles. Okay. Anything else on street? Water, wastewater? Parks and Rec? <coughs> I do on the, on the pool. I, I talked yep. with Cindy this morning. And our pool manager does not have a lifeguard certification. But yet PE class is coming in mornings and doing their thing. And to me, that's a big liability if nobody in that class knows how to do CPR. But she knows how to she's do CPR. CPR. She's CPR well, certified. She's I, just not a I'm, I'm, I'm still comfortable that I think our managers in the future has, should have their lifeguard certifications. Have all the others had lifeguard not certifications? Always. Uh, not always. Not always. I think they need to have their lifeguards, and I think they need to be able to teach swim lessons. That's WSI. I, I, I have to agree with them. It's, it's hard to manage lifeguards if you're not a lifeguard. So I think, I mean, just put it down for next year that I think our pool managers ought to have lifeguard certification if they want to open up the pool for the PE class. That's, that's just my thought. Okay. I will say the USD 364's contracts with us say that they are liable when they use our facility. Uh, they are liable. That's and a not, big not liability. The city. the city is not liable. They are anytime they, just like at the ballparks, they, they are right. liable. We are not. So all she's doing actually with them is being the, uh, just opens the, gate. the gate. The gate. Yeah, person. she just opens the gate. Yeah. yeah. It, they're, we're not liable when it's them. Is the pool going to be open in the morning for morning swim? Yes. Well, you know, it'd be nice if we had some way that we could be notified if the pool, if and when the pool is going to be open in the mornings, because there's no nothing posted on Facebook or anything. It was posted at. No, but I mean, any time. I mean, maybe it is now, but I mean, any time. You know, in the mornings, uh, we don't have any way of being notified. Uh, you mean that it was closed because of the lack of chemicals? chemicals? Any, in, what, because of weather or anything? That was posted on Facebook, that it was closed because of lack of chemicals. I, I understand that, but like in the mornings, you have to go down there to the pool, and there's a little sign in the window that says when it's going to be open. People that come in from the country or anything don't know until they get there if the pool is going to be open at six o'clock, and not everybody has Facebook either. Yeah, but it's not. Yeah, but it's not on Facebook. At, I know, at, but hold on, hold be. on, hold on. At three fifty-seven p.m. yesterday, no morning swim tomorrow. That was for this morning. Yes. Yes, I realize that, but I'm asking about any morning when the weather's bad or something like that. Is there some way that we can find out? Can you put it on the city site? At, at one? No, not at 6 o'clock in the morning. The person that runs the city site's in here. Um, but the only option, I mean, the option we, we have is for, for Facebook. And, um, yeah, I, I don't know of other options. But can't the person that's at the pool in the morning at 6 o'clock, can't they get on Facebook and put it on there that the pool's not going to be open so that we can all see it and the people coming in from the country can see it that they don't have to come to Marysville to find out if the pool's going to be open at, say, 615 or 645. I, I don't think you want to grant access to whoever's at the pool. I mean, we want to limit who can handle the city's social media accounts, I think. Right. And that, and that's the manager right now of the pool. Uh, she has access as long as um, uh, as one of the people who has access. But can't she even can't she just put a post a comment? 
She could. I, I don't know the. Is it has there been a, a time when, when this year? That yes. When was that? Uh, we had two mornings in one week, I think, that we had lightning and we people went down there. Mm. Or you had to call, and I called a couple of times and uh, nobody answered. She said she was on the phone talking to somebody else. Uh -huh. uh, and we have several people that come from out of town. So, so maybe some education on our rules so that people could make an educated assumption? Yeah, and other times we, we've had, had so that they've had... We put all of our put all of us. I'll put our phone numbers in there, and we've had we've had like a phone chain, you know, that that they called and put all the phones in, and they just did a phone chain, you know. Mm -hmm. Kathy did it, and different ones have done it, you know, so that we had a phone chain, so that you know that they call they put in a phone call and it notified everybody mm -hmm. as to what time it would be open. So you know, there's other ways to do it if they if they just would. You know, they could be accommodating, is what I'm saying. If we could be more accommodating for the people that are coming in. How many people are we talking about, Diane? Oh, over the morning, there's probably different more. It's 20, maybe some people, and they all, we all put our phone numbers and our addresses and everything. We write them down in the more, when we first enroll. You know, it could be one of those things where somebody could take it on themselves to create like a morning swim Facebook group or text group or whatever and then if it's one local person can send out a text to all, if they collect all those informa all that information that's you, you know like a, that's the easiest way rather than keeping something else on a on a staff member is if somebody who lives like a couple blocks away who's, who can easily go see if there's a sign or get the information <coughs> they can send out a group text to 20 people or whatever. But, but, these, but these people are already, this is already after 6 o'clock in the morning, and these people are already wanting to come in at 6 o'clock. I mean, who's ever manning well, the, already manning the swimming pool, if they have it set up, it doesn't take that long for them to start it. I mean, the thing is, though, the people we have around the pool are there to make sure the pool's safe and okay. all that, not so well, much get a hold of every Tom, Dick, and Harry because they didn't see there was lightning. And, and during the summer, it's not the manager. Sure. That was two other lifeguards. Yeah. There's the two oldest lifeguards, so we're not going to grant them access to the Facebook, to the, to the Facebook account of City I'm not, I'm not saying they ha we have to grant them access to the Facebook. If she would just put a comment or if she would... Never mind. It's, I'm just asking. When's the last day for morning swim anyway? Saturday. Yeah. Saturday is the last day for the pool to be open. Yep. Whatever. It doesn't make any difference. Well, it would be kind of nice if the person that's unlocking the door or locking the door could be the one that would say they're doing it. You got somebody that's unlocking the door and opening it, would be pretty easy for them to put out a message. Well, I, I think then you're getting into, though, giving that person access to a city Facebook account. We, yeah. Um, I mean, all you'd have to do is paste it, put a comment in there and say the pool will not be opened until 6.45, 6.30. I mean, that's all you have to do is yep. do a comment. But somebody has to have access to post that. I, mean, I, can, I, she's can, I, if, put a, I can put a comment in If one in of them there. just comments Into on it, if stream. we just have kind of a post out there that says is the pool open and then... People make comments and say you're doing a great comment. job or, or something. I mean, I I can put a comment on Facebook. Right, but uh, if you make that comment, doesn't it go on whatever thread you make it correct. on? So if, if you made that comment, if your thread is two weeks old and yeah. you make that comment, they would have to know to look underneath that thread you to see you that. Go, they would. You go, you go into Marysville, Marysville Aquatic Center, and if there's a comment there, everybody sees it if that goes into but, that. But if, it's an old, aquatic center. but if it's an old post, it gets bounced down the left. I mean, it, it, it takes a not a significant amount of work to go find that latest comment in a lot of yeah, cases. I'm, I'm well, but if you went specifically to, you know, Marysville Aquatic it, Center, whatever it's under, um, should be easy to find. I mean, they don't post that tremendously I, often. I, I, I wouldn't I, think it'd be... It, you'd probably have to scroll for a little while to get to it. I, I see what you're saying. I, I think the that, easiest, this is a, a community solution where the community of people who swim in the mornings can can create their own like text groups or Facebook groups or whatever 
communicate with one another, help each other out. And I think that's the cleanest, easiest solution where we can't, because then there'll be a case where we didn't post one morning because there was some technical thing and somebody's extra mad because we always post. It just sets up a whole another level of bureaucracy that the swimming pool doesn't need to mess with. Yeah, but I don't know all the people. I don't know, have all their phone numbers. Well, then how do we know they're even having problems? If you know two people that are, then call those people. I mean, why is that the city's responsibility? If they're, you know, people who are friends of yours, then by golly, help a friend out, and you do well, it. Well, we city do. doesn't need to be doing that. Well, we great, do. then there's no problem. Moving on. Because I've got to go down there and find out. Well, you know, maybe... Or call them, and they don't great. answer. Anyway, I think they'd is, appreciate it. This is it. old school. Huh? That we, this is pretty old school, but an answering machine or anything like that, I mean... Voice, yeah, voicemail box. Voicemail box. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound like a bad idea. I mean, I don't know what they, they probably don't have an answering machine down I there. I forget how they do. Do they? I forget how you change that stuff, though. Yeah. I don't and know. has she done it this year? She didn't. You what had to call her, and if she answered, then again, the phone, you're going to be fine, given an you know employee fine. access to your no, because that's mess that to your answering system. Or to the city huh? administrator's cell phone. <laughs> <a certain time. laughs> don't worry about it. We're, Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, I mean, if you had an answering message, you know, and you just recorded it for the day, then anybody wanted to call down there and find out the that would be was nice. closed. Um, but it's fine. We're, we're fine. But if somebody's down, I mean, when they're not open and somebody, I mean, are you trying to call down there and, and the phone line's busy, is what you're saying a lot of times? They're out on the deck. They aren't going to answer because they don't have the phone with them. Basically. Okay. It's in the office. Yeah. Yep. All right. This Anything? is the first year we've had a problem, so. And maybe it's because, I mean, this year was the first year that we had a couple, we kind of had a couple different people doing it, kind of shared, had guards yep. doing it. And then we had had a dedicated person kind of do it in the past or somebody that, that knew a lot of people did the morning swim. And so I think they kind of took it upon themselves to notify them. Um, We might have to just think on that for a while and see if we can come up with a better solution for next year. Um, anything else on Parks and Rec? So Some we don't talk about what I brought up. I mean, is that everybody? Uh, I mean, that's policies? that's something probably because we're going to be talking about probably several pool policies. I would guess at the end of the year, be it yeah. swimsuits or and I've heard it. There was another, I think, uh, pool pass policy. There'll be a few different things we'll probably be talking about after the pool's Same closed. Time. Yeah. That'd probably be something to just roll into that discussion. I'll make sure I make a list of all the things if I can remember them all. Um, anything else on Parks and Rec? Cemetery and Airport? Police and Fire? Admin and Finance? Um, Mr. Mayor? Yes, Terry. <coughs> I, I have two things I would like to talk about I think we should this is a good time that we should address why these folks were in about the fire plugs I think if we rewrote our bill and we, we set it to be with what the national plan is where it's three feet and make all these people happy and you and you talked to uh, Dave did you not the chief yes uh, but I'll, I'll first state this um, we don't exactly know where we got the 10 feet from but when staff looked at other communities we're not the only ones who do 10 feet um, and when I first talked to Dave, David uh, Richardson about it he said um, he stated that he they needed the 10 feet um, uh, but when nobody would listen when he tried to enforce it, um, he basically left it as, uh, we have chainsaws on the trucks for a reason. If the fire um, man needs access to the fire hydrant and there's something in his way, he, can, he or she can take care of it with a chainsaw and the law was there to back it up. Yeah. That's how the the fire chief at the time of me talking to him uh when was that oh a week ago 
Was he the one that set it at 10 feet? No. In 2011, the council set it at 10 feet. Was that part of a, a greater passing of an ordinance, or was that part of some sort of large omnibus ordinance? They, the code book. The and code. If, you look at our, if you look at our code book, it says uh, code 2011. That typically means that at the time of the writing of the code book, it was included in that version. It doesn't mean there's an ordinance to back it up. It doesn't mean, I mean, the ordinance that backs it up is the ordinance that establishes the code book. Um, there's no, uh, I don't think in 1987, whatever time the, the last code book was done, it was in there. Uh, but in 2011, the council decided that was what it needed to be. Well, then it needs to be reworded then because it refers to plantings yes. and grass is plantings. Has everybody got to leave a mud hole around their fire plug now? I was going to ask about uh, that as well. I mean, if it, does it have to be no more than 50% as tall as the hydrant or no taller? Because, I mean, that's like you're saying, if it's some ground plant, that's Thank still you. a plant thing. What's the definition of planting? I, yeah, and, and I... It's relative there. And, and so I, th I think at the time they were looking at um, people uh, using common sense and knowing that grass is probably not a planting that they were looking at. Um, it's grass, unless it's, we already got that covered. It can, grass can't be a, above eight inches. That's not gonna interfere uh, with, um, with the fire hydrant. You're uh, missing the point, Austin. Uh, no, let me finish. Yes, go ahead. Um, uh, and the idea of the 10 feet was to give, and this is me, my assumptions here after talking with the, the fire chief, was to give the leeway um, to the city if need be, if the plantings, uh, for instance, somebody happened to plant a tree right in front of the, what do you, I, what, is it a nipple? Steamer line. Steamer line, in front of the steamer line, that we had the ability to go and take it out. Um, that's not to say that the fireman is going to go in and see, oh, that tree behind it that's not in my way uh, is seven feet away. I'm going to go take it down. That's, that's not to say that's going to happen. Um, I think at the time, and again, another assumption, is that the council was looking at who is this going to affect, how is this going to affect our fire department, uh, and not a, a how are we going to send the uh, code enforcer on a rampage to, to make sure nobody's got any plants, um, uh, trees, or anything within 10 feet of a fire hydrant. Are the hydrants with a consistent distance from the curb line, or is it, I'm, it's a little inconsistent, but... It should be in the right-of-way, whatever the right-of-way so is on that street. it could be two feet, or it could be eight feet. Yeah, it won't be eight feet. It, Never? Not typically. Business Probably. district and everything are different. <coughs> uh, you'd have to find out the right way for each road. That's what it should be. Right. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, the, whoever's plant, uh, putting in the, the fire hydrant is not going to get it exactly two feet or five feet away from, from, the, from the curb, but typically it's, it's a, uh, not too far from the curb line, but far enough that if somebody... I mean, it, you'd have to veer your vehicle into it to, to really take it out. So, after all these years, what prompted these letters going out? Um, uh, one of the council meetings. Are you referring to what I said? Well, yes. I mean, that, that's when it got brought up, so... Definitely got brought up. It got brought up a couple times, and so we and so Will went around and wrote up fire hydrants that were in violation according to how our code read. Um, like I say, it's, it's nothing that's been enforced. It's one of those things that I think the fire department, I think when they wrote it, they erred on the side of giving them plenty of leeway. I think basically if, if a firefighter shows up and say there is stuff in the way and they start cutting, I don't really want them getting out of tape measure and go, oh, I'm only allowed to cut three feet. If they cut two or if they cut five, I don't care as much as long as they hurry up and get it done because there's a house on fire, which is the main concern. Um, I think that the 10 feet gives them leeway so if they're out there and they step on somebody's manicured corner that we don't have 
somebody come to City Hall saying they stomped on my bush and, and, and this and that because they should know that look, I, I'm not going to say that I, I like people beautifying their corners but they also have to realize it is a fire hydrant there and if there's a fire the guys aren't going to be ginger about it and I don't want them to be. <laughs> I want them hooking onto that thing and getting the fire out. So your, um, your kind of take is you can leave it as is and then gauge the enforcement. I think that's basically how it's been for years. Well, is no it? Yes. To well, as long as they're, it's not like next to a large tree. Yeah. You know, you put a tree in in front yeah. of it, and then it grows to be 15 foot around, and yeah. you got like four inches to the hydrant. It's yeah. hiding. You know, that's an extreme, but there are different things you can put in there. There are aggressive and they grow fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, realistically, you know do they do it at your own risk? Realistically, do they need ten? No, but they do, they don't need ten realistically. But they went overly broad, and I think most of the other communities we looked at did the same thing, just to kind of make sure that they had plenty of leeway, that firefighters could do whatever they felt that they needed to do, and they had plenty of radius around that thing to do it. Then why can't we rewrite that code so it's a shorter distance? Well, that's I'm saying I happy. I don't think that they I don't think the chief really wanted to see it. Reduced. We can just do what we have been and kind of try to kind of keep it at bay, like well, what Mr. Kramer did. Absolutely. I mean, mm -hmm. and, and maybe maybe yeah, another good. maybe another. I mean, it's not exactly the same, uh, but uh, we have easements and uh, and let's say easements all over the city, uh, utilities and such. Uh, I don't think there's a restriction for anybody to um, being able to build a fence over our easement. Um, but if we need to get there, uh, know that we're going to rip it out yeah. and they can put it back themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's basically the, the uh, risk that people take all the time, uh, potentially building their fence on or a j right, I mean, right on the line of an easement or... Uh, over an easement uh, that they would be responsible for putting their own um, technically their own sidewalk back even though we we do it and uh, we do help them out with that um, uh, and the fence that's in the way uh, and technically there's sprinkler lines they, they get in our way um, uh, even though we we do help on on those occasions when we when we find them but uh, in all technicality uh, that it would be on them and it's their risk. And it's not just the city, it's other either. things that are in that right of way too, be it gas or you know, mm -hmm. phone lines, whatever. If they have to get to it, then they do. Right. So yeah, have you had any problems with the bigger trees with the tree roots go get into the water lines or not not necessarily because the water and surprisingly the water line to the fire hydrant isn't isn't huge. Uh, I forget if it's two or like it's just it it's a couple inch. Yes. Um, so for the the hydrant itself, I mean, is the biggest portion of that, and usually the water line straight up and down uh, to uh, and, and there's attached. The front, there's no concern with tree roots or nothing. There, I mean, I'm not going to say 100 percent no, uh, but uh, I. I'm not going to say anything else, but I mean, I'm just saying, uh, not really. Yes, sir. I still believe we have a lot of taxpayers here that try to keep their yards nice. Yeah. We have, we had two of them in here tonight. Mm -hmm. This was, this was a tough deal to get a registered letter, somebody that's never done nothing wrong, because we bought a guy a $50,000 truck that he could have stopped and asked him about it. It was handled completely wrong by us. Oh, it no, it's, that's a policy. I mean, he's not just supposed to be driving around just having a conversation. I mean, there's got to be documentation behind it. I mean, it's how we generally handle I've gotten those letters before. It's generally how it's handled. Um, just basically, I don't know what... I mean, and then they came here, and now we talk yes. about it, and we say, you're right, we shouldn't yeah. be making them, you know, do this because this is why it exists. That just proves the system works. I mean, yeah. right? Well, we went yeah. through the process, yeah. So, I mean.
mean, as far as it goes, we've decided not to act, but can, I mean, do we officially absolve people or do we just say, thanks for doing a good job and move on? Yeah. Now, yeah. if anything good came from this, I mean, there's been quite a few people that have cleaned up around their hydrants, I mean, so it hasn't been an all bad thing. And I'll, not that fire's not important, but, I mean, the sight lines thing is a lot bigger concern to me anyway, it's, because it happens many times a day, every day, that that could be an issue, whereas... And, you know, I don't think every motorist is going to get out and cut it, cut it back like a fireman could and would. I mean, to me, that's the bigger hazard. Yeah. So as long as this isn't gone crazy with, then, yeah. That common sense has got to come in. For sure. Yeah. Well, that's, you've got an example here in town right now. A lady has complained she's going to kill somebody because she can't see out of her driveway. Yeah. And when that was addressed, it didn't get addressed. But now this gentleman's got 10 foot of heads taken out, and his heads look like hell, but it's still up to where she can't see out of her driveway. Where, why can't, why well, can't well, we don't have much control over, I mean, other than the sight lines, what people plant in the right of way. I mean, whether it's trees or, or whatever, generally. I mean, it, it's the same thing. They've got to realize that there's, if we've got, utilities going through there and there's a water main leak or something like that it's getting dug out but otherwise they pretty much free I mean, i've got trees all over down my right of way that have been there for a long time my point is well, if we could just cut back we're three times over the national fire thing why can't we make it a little bit smaller instead of having it this big long distance and we, rewrite it to where it doesn't use the word plantings Bushes and hedges and trim, that kind of stuff, yes. Plantings also includes grass. That's where it comes from. It's a state. seedling. Yeah. We have to rewrite so it is, it is fair to the people. And if we can't cut it back and you got to have 10 feet, yeah. that's overkill. But if that's what you want, I can understand. I myself would be apt to defer to the fire department. And if the fire department says we don't need 10 feet, then fine. And if the fire department said no, we would like to keep that 10 feet so that we know we aren't going to get chewed out because we tromped on something that was five feet away from the fire hydrant, then I'm apt to leave it as it is. We can be fair to the people by showing discretion when yes. situations like this come up. That's where we're being fair. We don't have to revise it, I don't think. I think we're being fair in this situation. I agree. Okay, enough about the fire plug. I have one other thing on my list that I wanted to talk about because I haven't had a chance. I am on the Administration and Finance Committee, and I've also, I came asking for something to happen, and I wanted to bring some information to our attorney, Mr. McNish, and he didn't get it because he wasn't at the meeting, and about two meetings ago, we went ahead and went ahead and did something without doing what was suggested at the meeting that we find out if anybody else has replaced a charter ordinance with bits and pieces from other things after we've opted out. And when I came into that special meeting we had, I found the papers sitting here on our desk. I will read to you what I'm writing and asking Mr. McNish to do, and that's at our July 28th meeting, I provided a copy of a response I received from Amanda Stanley, General Counsel for the League of Municipalities. Per Mrs. Stanley's recommendation, I request that John McNish, that he does the research on repeal by implication to see if this has been done in other cities. And I'm, I'm asking that he do that. It has nothing to do with motions or anything else. I got a copy for you too, soon. You you had a uh, email from Lee that you not done? Yeah, I was looking. Uh, I got the notes on it because uh, I missed that meeting. Let's see if I can find those real quick. But the the email that Miss Stanley did really didn't apply, in, in my opinion. Uh, but. Well, 
you would just find out if other cities have done it. Uh, well, I did. I did find Seneca. Uh, I found one there. I, I may still language the future. It made it very crystal clear that uh, they exempted out, and they're going to find do their own code. Uh, you know, stylistically, could the original ordinance be written better? Uh, quite conceivably, yeah. Uh, there's always somebody who can write it better. Uh, I did research repeal by implication, and uh, generally my thoughts are on, on this type of thing. You don't really have a repeal by implication, but uh, I, I remember reading it in the uh, in one of the league's books about uh, repeal by implication. And I did find a case on it. Arguably, it is repeal by implication, but. Uh, my thoughts on this is you perhaps have one person agreed and uh, this has been over 60 days no appeal was taken to district court which could have happened so I'm thinking uh, it, it works mm -hmm. and I I think the uh, cynic ordinance I would <coughs> if I would have seen that back when I when we were drafting this I would have done the same thing saying stop uh, you know you want to be transparent and that's that's the reason why the extra language is in there to be transparent to the, the public. But if it would just said, uh, hey, we're repealing it. We're not going to say how we're going to do it. We're repealing it. Uh, that that would have worked beautifully. And uh, then you could just gone with the code book and there have been no issues, uh, questions or answers. But I think, again, the test is you look at the subject matter and you look at the intent. And going back and looking at it, uh, the subject matter was such that it really could be exempted out in its entirety, and the intent was to establish it through the code procedures, not the charter ordinance. I think it's really uh, to be extre extremely costly to every time to do a charter ordinance when it's not necessary. Now, the subject matter, I want to tell you, if it, you were changing the, uh, the liquor laws, that is purely legislative, not administrative. And I would have a disagreement. I would say that's be a charter ordinance because it deals with legislative type of matters. Here we're dealing with ministerial, ministry type of things. They're done internally with the city. So <clears throat> give that subject matter. I still stand by my opinion. You know, sure, I could write the attorney general and say, hey, we have a disagreement with my opinion and see what they say. Uh, I don't think it's going to go very far when I, say, when I start off saying, well, we have a disagreement. We want you to decide. And we're not going to go to court. We want you to be a third party. But I gave my best efforts, and I, I acknowledge there's uh, the way it was done. Uh, could have been done better. I think I said that. And uh, but that was that's that was uh, hindsight's 2020. Uh, but I, after seeing the city ordinance that, or the city ordinance, I thought, well, I really steal it like that and not worry about being transparent. I, my thoughts my thoughts are just like little meetings. It's not how to get around it. Now, I have city officials saying how to get around it. It's how to comply and how to be transparent. And so that's what I was trying to say, in my opinion. Uh, uh, so I, I'm okay with the way the charter word is written, and they put the languages, how internally we're going to do things, how administratively we're going to do things. So I was okay with that. Uh, but I think it's... Uh, would cause unnecessary expense to uh, take it up to a vote, four thousand dollar vote, to decide who's going to supervise who. I just think that's the subject matter. Is such it's clear to me it should be a, a charter ordinance. Ordinance. Well, charter ordinance to change the internal workings, internal mechanism within the city. But if it's like as a liquor law, if we're going to have it on uh, Thanksgiving or have it on Fourth of July. That's purely legislative, and that subject matter really needs to be a charter ordinance. It's just a different type of matter. You don't think the very same thing would apply to the fact that <clears throat> what we did by taking parts from a charter ordinance and from another ordinance and different things, and then all of a sudden delegate our authority away as a council people. You know, ultimately, uh, the council, even the way it's set up now, you insulate yourself from potential liability with employment issues. So the, you have a supervisor going to make the necessary decisions, and, and it can work itself up through the city council, but you're protecting yourself from liability perspective. You don't want, to, you don't want your governing body to be in handling personnel matters on a day-to-day -day basis. That's just... That's just too risky and too much liability. Uh, 
consider hearing what you said. I have, I, it was a nice argument, but I, I just think that, like I said, the subject matter intent was to, to, uh, to restructure internal workings within the uh, agency, the city of this, and so a, a good old-fashioned ordinance is good enough. Because those things may change. You may want to have uh, more people and uh, more rules, more regulations on employees. But I would would not wouldn't want to make that a a a vote of the public. Uh, it's uh, who's going to supervise who. It just doesn't make sense to me. That's all I have. All right. Anything else on admin finance? Uh, no appointments. Uh, do we need to have an executive session? Yes, no. Yes, Terry. Done any more talk? Have you had any more contact about getting us a health officer? I tried talking to the health department a couple of times today. I didn't get through to them. I know they're you did well. I can't hear. They're you. super busy right now. I tried to get a hold of them a couple of times. I did see if they found somebody to be the health department administrator. I think is what that title is, if I remember right. Director. Medical director. Medical. There you go. Um, I don't think that they've found a county health official replacement yet that I know of, have they? And according to the paper, they had talked. Nancy Waz is going to be the medical director, but they could. Yeah. She didn't want to be the health officer. Yeah. Or wasn't sure she wanted to be the health officer. So still working on it. Still working on it. Okay. I know. I mean, people have been watching the counts and you know, kind of what's going on. Um, Would and you I, want to be a health officer in this? Oh, you're going to be getting yelled at and screamed at, and yeah. But that's it's the not problem. fun. Yeah. And and the counties didn't listen yeah. to their health officer no. when they had them. So you can have the same health officials say anything to three different governing bodies and they'll choose to do what they want to do anyway. Okay. And it's local governments and on up to state and governors and everything else. They choose to listen or not to listen to the health officials. Um, you know, I mean, our counts are cold and steady, but I mean, what worries me is that I hear more and more stories of people having to be transferred miles and miles and miles away to try and find an open bed because the places we normally transfer to Lincoln and Kansas City and Manhattan are full up with with regular patients and COVID patients and they do not have the facilities and the staffing to handle that and if it gets much worse than what it is I don't know what the options are going to be I mean they're going to be the point of then you get into that deciding who gets the care and who doesn't when you have a limited amount of resources and that's where we're rapidly heading something doesn't change unfortunately and I wouldn't want to be the person that decide who gets saved and who gets the best care and who is worth spending the time and resources on and who is not going to make it and is a waste of resources that is not that's not the position you want to be in at all um, like I say it, it, right now if you want to be transferred to a bigger hospital you're going to be waiting until they can find a bed somewhere that opens up for you and hopefully it's opening up because somebody's getting out. Sometimes it's open up because somebody's going, didn't have a good outcome. But unfortunately, that's, I mean, that's just where we're headed right now. Um, I mean, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, the most important thing is that, you know, unless your doctor tells you that you shouldn't, you should get vaccinated. I mean, something like 90% of the people that are getting critically ill with this are unvaccinated people. And something like 50% of the people that in the country are vaccinated. So if you got 50-50 split vaccinated, unvaccinated, and 90% of the people that are in the ICUs are unvaccinated, that tells me that the vaccine does something. Because otherwise it should be a 50-50 split. Um, and it's not just COVID patients it affects. It affects people that are undergoing cancer treatments and get sick and then they can't get them into the hospital or, you know, or they break a bone or they're in a car wreck. It affects a lot of other things besides just COVID patients. 
and I know I'm kind of going on a rant, but it's yeah, good one. But it, it's Sorry. it's serious. I mean, oh, it's yeah. serious. It's very, it um, is very serious. But so now, if we find a health official, are they going to tell us anything that we don't already know from reading the newspaper and going on Facebook and seeing the counts and just knowing in general? I mean, we've been do through this for a year and a half. We mm -hmm. know what is going on. I, would I like to find a health official? Yes. Would I want to be a health official and go out there for getting paid nothing to get screamed and yelled at by everybody? Probably not. Because they have not been nice this last year to those health officials across this country as a general rule. So, anyway. Next. Is there anything else on admin finance? Wage determination. <laughs> uh, well, we, oh, actually, uh, do we need to have an executive session? That's where we're at. We have to have an executive session. Do we need one? Do you want to have one? I don't know. Do we? Does anybody want to call one? Second time you brought that up. No. <laughs> nope. Nope. Okay. All right. Yeah, now we're at a round table. Round table? Mm hmm. Bobby. Nothing. Crickets. Todd? Good. Diane? Uh, I have a couple things. I just came from the Legion, and yeah. they're working on the wall. And so uh, Dave Woolley wanted me to say that they would like to have, they're going to have a uh, shuttle bus and they would like to have it over here, over by Bobby's and that little indent thing there. Okay. And yeah. they're gonna put some cones there and it will be there, uh, let's see, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from nine to four. Mm -hmm. And it'll be parked there. So they'll have some, some, pi some pylons or cones there and it'll be parked there. I think it's on the hour or whatever. So, and they want a permission to park it there and to pick people up. So, and they'll put they'll put a sign they'll put a sign they'll put a sign they'll they're they're making a sign or something there that'll say shuttle bus or something like that. So hopefully that'll be okay. So does anybody have a problem with that? I don't. Okay. And then they also need volunteers yet. So uh, Ron Green's in charge of volunteers and. They need some. They need them. Yep, for this weekend. Uh, they're running four-hour shifts from six o'clock in the morning till ten o'clock at night. And uh, on uh, Thursday and Friday from two to six in the afternoon. Cool part of the day. So if anybody's willing, they really, and they can call Ron at five six two. Seven nine six five. So they would appreciate anybody, any of the council people or anybody, uh, city employees or anybody. We should encourage people to go and help. So uh, they would really like to have us participate because they're bringing in a lot of school kids and stuff too. And they are having the meeting at six o'clock on Wednesday night for they would really really need everybody that is volunteering to come to this meeting because they'll tell you what they're what you're supposed to do so for the volunteers up to the Legion or in that area I don't know exactly where it's going to be but up that way okay okay if you have any questions you can call Ron or Ron. Ron will know what's going on, so. All right? All right. Anything else? I don't think so. Just go see it. It's an awesome thing if you've never seen it. They're putting in a lot, a lot of time and a lot of work, so. Yes, Pray for nice weather. Cool weather, maybe. Well, cool would be. <laughs> cool would be nice, but I don't think yes. it's going to happen. Terry? Oh, uh, yeah. Got a couple things. One, one of them I really think it'd be nice if our city would write a letter of thank you for his time, Doc Ryan. 
He's yeah, retired. We, I think that would be really a nice thing if we did that. And my other question, because I go through these bills every two weeks, I haven't run across one about the Patterson Trust. We took real estate from those folks, and I don't know that there's ever been a plaque or a monument put up about taking their ground. And that's been three, in December the 10th, it'll be three years. We haven't done our part of our real estate transaction. Have to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah, we were supposed to be collector. Do you know anything about that, Austin? Have anything been done about it? Uh, we haven't purchased the sign yet, no. Oh. I'd sure like to see that get taken care of. That's all I have. Okay. Back to plaques. What about plaques for Stinglemeyers? Did we ever do anything? We were going to put them by the um, kiosk. Which by the we kiosk. Have fixed yet. I was going to say, <laughs> we but need we have... We the kiosk. I know, but we, yeah, but we could do something... There was a picture in the report about the thing that said Don and Leanne Stinglemeyer had paid for all the flag poles or whatever. Flags. 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 They bought flags on this original circle. Okay. Yeah. On the original circle. Yeah, that was, yeah I think Dom put that in his yeah. report. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he did. So there is something out there that says that, right? It's in the works. It's in the planning. It's yeah. in the works. It's I know, but we really need to do something before, it may be a while before the kiosk is done. I mean, surely we, surely we can make a plaque and then put it by the kiosk when the kiosk gets done, surely. I mean, you want it to just sit in the cemetery now then, or what do you Well, want I mean, can we put it up some, can we put it up someplace or by the kiosk we have now? Wasn't that a big thing? Yeah, it was a big, no, this was huge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's so. doing with that, it says that, and then it says down below all the veterans. Oh, is that the one? The, I wonder if he's going to put it with the people who donated the flagpoles. Oh, that, that would, would make sense. Yeah. That would make really good sense because that is a big, and mm -hmm. they we did get somebody to donate two of their burial spaces by the gate. So I did a quick yeah, claim on that, yeah. and it's a big sign of everybody that did flag poles. So that would make sense to put the flag by that. Yeah. That so would. where did where did you see this? It's gonna the city the report. report. It's you know, last Friday. Yeah. That one that comes the cemetery. The one the Dom does. The people donated. That's part of the donating the flag oh. poles. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That's okay. Fine. Yeah. So to put it by that, I think that's well, being yeah. land in there. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean that would make really good sense. Yeah. I mean, we really need to do something before something happens. I mean, yeah. Yeah. We do. Yeah. Where it's, and especially where it can go with the pools now. I mean, no. These people aren't getting any younger, you know, so. Mr. Mayor. Can I? Yes, John. I'm going to hit the topic since yes. Terry's still here. I pulled the uh, 1987. Uh, when okay. dug out to the salt mines and found the very the old 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 one and uh, I also had 2011 version but uh, after looking at uh, kind of the introductory paragraphs and they talk about subject matter what should be general in nature versus should be more specific and this internal workings employs really something that's general in nature it really fits within that definition of those early ordinances and then I look back at chart order six I'm thinking Maybe it's too critical of it. It's more like the Seneca orders I talked about. It says, hey, we're exempting out from uh, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the statutes. And by the way, we're going to provide uh, additional provisions. Mm -hmm. And by golly, you did. So I think given the, look, going back and look at ordinance number six, that old, old ordinance, I think uh, back in 1987, I, I mean, the intent's there and, mm -hmm. and the subject matter's there. I just think it's... Uh, it can be uh, dealt with through uh, through a journal ordinance, and I, you know, I brought this for the purpose of a. I thought we'd have an executive session. I thought maybe I would go back at some of the history, but you know, I, I thought I popped it open here, and I, I think historically, I think you're a okay, and you're the city's on solid footing, and, and uh, like I said, if it ever gets challenged, you know, you could always do a charter ordinance, and, but then you know, if you want to incur four thousand, six thousand yeah. dollars for an election. On who's going to supervise who, but that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you, John. Keith. Or 
Crawford? No. Bulleen? I don't have anything. I mean, my, I kind of said my spiel. So, yes. To adjourn. Second. Second.